Hello and welcome back to the Deborah Peters Show. I have an amazing episode for all of you today. And I'd like to just start out by saying welcome. If this is the first time that you have tuned in to my show, I really appreciate you being here. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Nader. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, it's, it's just an absolutely exciting time right now. I'm going to talk a little bit about that, and then I'm going to share with you some of the things that are taking place on my end of the world, um, and then I'm going to teach you a repatterning tool so that you can actually receive more with total ease. I mean, isn't, isn't that why you're here, right? Is to learn how to be more in the receiving mode from um, an energy of total ease. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that today as well. So let me say hi to a few more people. Shaka is on here. She made it. Hey, welcome. Uh, Catherine and Maurice and Jerevix. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, let's see, who else do we have? And Maurice. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of my show. I truly appreciate it. My whole um, objective this last probably year is to build up lots and lots and lots of amazing content on my channel um, so that when we launch the new website, which is going to be very soon, and I know I keep saying that every, <laughs> every one of these episodes, but for real, I think tomorrow might just be the day. We've just had some glitches with um, the server, so you know how that works. And, and I'm the one that's been kind of running between uh, developers and techie people and, and you know, it's not my forte, but I managed to keep everybody calm, everybody happy, you know, because the egos are flying and people are ready to jump ship, but it's like, you know what, it's all good, it's all good. Um, I find that if you don't pass judgment and you don't point the finger and and create blame, then you can always negotiate anything. And so I've been kind of having a little bit of fun with that. Uh, let's see what else is happening on my end of the world. I've got some amazing speaking engagements lined up, which I'm going to share with you today. And um, I've had this just incredible uh, last week or so, tons of clients from the past contacting me again and they're ready to do some, I know it's exciting. Um, they're ready to do some more coaching and what's cool about it, some of them, hi Kiko, hi Jose. Uh, some of these clients, you know, I haven't connected with for almost a decade. So it's really beautiful to have people circle back around and go, hey, you know, remember all that stuff you taught me? Well, I've worked with it and I'm, I'm ready for some new tools and I want to take it to the next level. Hi, Pranel. Nice to see you. So let's see, where to begin? Well, um, hi, Jose. So I'll give you some big announcements. Um, I have been working on this incredible opportunity in London with NASDAQ and um, today after months, I've been working on this for months, you guys. Today I got confirmation that all the kinks are worked out, everybody's happy, we've dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. And so I am going to be speaking at NASDAQ in London on March the 7th. And I'm absolutely delighted for this opportunity. It's a program we've put together for women in finance to, you know, start to encourage women to really come forward and um, own their power, own their space in the world, and to be more in the receiving mode and more in the collaboration space and 
and more in the creation process of what is it that you want to create. And this isn't anything to do with um, making men wrong or, you know, thinking that there's a limited pie and it's like, you know, now we need to push all the guys out to the side of the curb and, and let the women in. It's not an either or. This is like my favorite saying. It's not an either or. It's an and. A-N-D. It is an and. We are all here to work together. We're all here to support one another. And when we learn how to get along, whether it's um, gender or cultural or race or socioeconomic, you know, the most important thing is to get into a place of appreciation and rather than make that other person wrong or make that other gender wrong or race or whatever, whatever, you know, if you're on the blue team or the red team, the blue pill or the red pill, it's about being in alignment. And when you're in alignment with yourself, then there's nothing outside of you that you think is holding you back because everything is inside. You know, I will say that um, I get a lot of downloads and insights when I'm outside in nature. So I make it a point to get outdoors on the weekends for sure because I'm, I'm inside, I'm in my office, this is my office, and um, I'm in creation mode in front of this computer for many, many hours a day. I'm on the phone with clients, you know, I'm doing a lot in that space. And after a while, I, my energy just kind of gets a little wonky. So I make a point of every day going for a walk at lunchtime and just kind of hitting the reset button, you know, um, getting some different energy flowing in and through me. And then, of course, on the weekend, I pretty much spend at least one out of Saturday and Sunday, I'll spend one of those days outside for pretty much the entire day. And um, just kind of get out of the city, go for trail runs, go for bike rides, you know, just do things that are really physically challenging so that, you know, I stop thinking and actually get into a space with my body where I'm, I'm more connected. So on Sunday... I rode my bike about eight miles out to this trailhead and then I did a trail run. And then at the end of the trail run, um, I just laid under this tree for about an hour um, and meditated and it was beautiful. And it really kind of, it gave me sort of a reset. Um, and then I started using my energy pull and pulling money through, through me um, that I was, you know, creating and as a result of it the last couple of days have been like really prosperous <laughs> so if you're not using my energy pull get over to my youtube channel which is neuroengineering institute and definitely find that energy pull and the meditation and start working with those two tools they're free why not right so yeah, so the next big announcement is um, I'm booked to speak at the Women's Economic Forum in Amsterdam on March 8th and 9th. So for those of you that don't know this, March 8th every year is um, Women, International Women's Day. And so I always like to do something international I love to do things international all the time. Um, but I do like to do things international, especially on International Women's Day. So I'll be flying into London, spend a few few days in London town and see some clients and, and then speak at NASDAQ and then jump on a plane, fly over to Amsterdam, speak at the Women's Economic Forum. And I have one more speaking gig um, that I'm formulating as we speak and I will have that announcement for you very, very soon. Um, what else is cooking? So we, we partner with colleges and um, there's a college in Canada, in Alberta, in the prairies, uh, the Medicine Hat College that has asked me to come back a second time and to um, teach a course on how to accelerate your business, which is my forte. Hi, Brett, nice to see you. Um, so I'll be doing that on May 7th through 10th. 
And I just booked another speaking a gig on March 27th in Los Angeles for wine, women, and sorry, wine, women, and wow. So it's a group of business women in Pasadena. I'll be speaking for them on the 27th of March. So it's kind of all my updates. Um, book is pretty much done now with the edits and I'm going to get that over to the publisher. Hi, Pete. Nice to see you. Um, and so hopefully um, I'll have the book done and out in hardcover. By the way, I'm doing it in hardcover. Talked with my publisher and, and we really feel very strongly that for anybody that's in business that's looking to scale their business, this is the quintessential book. This is like, this is the game changer. You know, as a business coach and a mindset transformation expert, this is the game changer. There isn't anybody else that has this material. It's me. And um, and I'm so blessed to have this. And so putting it into a book that you all can read and apply and grow your business um, is exciting. So I'd like to hear from you guys. So uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about your business? So we've got Jose Jimenez. Um, tell us about your business, Jose and Purnell. And let's see who else do we have? Uh, wow, Olympia is with us. Nice to see you. Um, Catherine, tell us about your business. And Shaka, I'd like to know all about your business. So yeah, put in the comments. Let us know um, what it is that you do for business, where you're located, and um, how is it that we can serve you? I'd be happy to create content that would be of the greatest service to you in terms of where you're headed and what you would like to be creating for yourself. So today's show is all about saying yes. You know, I wanted to share this with you because I don't think very many people really understand why as a humanity, we have so much resistance energy around success, around abundance, around prosperity. Um, so what is it that keeps you from thriving? What is it that has you blocked? Um, so I'm gonna just pause that for a second. So here's some great comments. So I do know what you're doing for a business, Pete, but not everybody else on this show knows what you're doing for a business. And so it's an opportunity for you to just brand yourself a little bit, right? Um, and thank you, Olympia. You have a beautiful mind and a great heart. And thank you for your service to humanity. Uh, my pleasure. You know, I love doing this, right? I'm wired for this. Shaka has... Um, a product called Manat, and um, Joseph is a truck driver. What else we got here? Mm, 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 mm. Let me just have a look. Um, I'm going to pin some of this. And um, what else? Kiko, tell us about your business. And Lynn King, I know you join us repetitively, and I really appreciate you being here. I'd love to know more about your business as well. And Catherine and Maurice. Um, so yeah, why is it? Why is it that we have a tendency to block ourselves from receiving? What is that all about? You know, the thing is, is that we're always asking for more. You know, it's how we're hardwired. Our unconscious mind, the part of us, the reason I call it the unconscious instead of the subconscious is because it's the part of us that we're not necessarily aware of. It's the part of us that we're not necessarily trained to understand or, or be aware of or perceive, right? So what keeps that happening? What is that all about? And um, I'd really like to address that. Hi, Feliciano. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to have you jump on here. I appreciate you. Um, physician, tell us a little bit more about you. 
Um, so why is it? Well, I, I, I've discovered that we actually have a neuron that um, is, is defaulted to no. It's how we block ourselves. And we probably, most of you probably aren't even aware of it. Hi, Nevin Sanley. Are you in LA, Brussels, Turkey? Where are you now? Um, so here's the deal. We have uh, a neuron, the D1 neuron, which is wired for yes. And then we have the D2 neuron, which is wired for no. Did you guys know that, that we actually have a neuron that is wired for no? Um, and these two neurons rival each other. However, the D2 neurons exert more um, inhibition. Therefore, we have a tendency to go into that default of no. For example, someone comes to you and says, let me, uh, you, here's, here's, let me just make it really simple. Someone says to you, wow, you really look great today. What do you do? Some people go, oh, no, I don't. I look like crap today. I looked in the mirror and I thought I looked like crap today. Or someone says to you, wow, I really like your outfit. And you go, oh, that old thing. You know, I just, it's just old. I just pulled it out of the back of the closet. Or I bought it at a discount store. You won't believe it. It only cost me 40 bucks. So whatever it is we do, we actually negate that gift from the universe, that love, that appreciation. And appreciation is probably one of the highest vibrations that you can actually be in, because appreciation is love. So it works like this, it's like, um, hi, Raphael and Marco, good to have you. Put Pop in the um, comment section um, what it is that uh, you do. Yeah, everything's fantastic, Feliciano. Nice to see you, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Um, so we go into this space of blocking, and we don't even realize we're blocking. And appreciation and love is like the highest vibration that we can be in. So gratitude is here, which is a pretty high vibration, and then appreciation is up here. Appreciation is up here with love. And there's nothing more beautiful and more pure than love. Just pure love, right? So we have this neuron that defaults us to playing small, um, struggle, the idea of hard work, grinding it out, making it difficult, you know? And it really helped me when I did this research and I discovered that this we actually have this going on within us. It kind of demystified a lot of my own patterns. And it, um, it also demystified what my clients go through. You know, I have clients that come to me that they're building their business or growing their companies, yet it's like this angst, it's like this resistance is like this uphill kind of trudge. So being able to say to someone, hey, did you know you actually have a D1 and a D2 neuron and one is a yes and one is a no and you actually block yourself, right? They're like, wow, who knew? And if somebody doesn't tell you that, it, it just like you end up on this hamster wheel of life trying to figure out what's wrong with you. And there's nothing wrong with you. That's the number one lesson I'd like to point out today is there is nothing wrong with you. You are phenomenal. You are beautiful. You are incredible. You're smart and you're kind and you're generous and you're loving and you're fit and you're healthy and you're prosperous and you're wealthy. You know, say those things to yourself on a regular basis and actually watch yourself blossom like a flower.
right? Just allow yourself to just be what God meant you to be. You know, it's the beingness of your greatness that attracts more amazing opportunities and more beautiful relationships. And it actually restores the alkaline pH to your body, which is I'm going to do a whole show on weight loss because I, I've come from this past of owning a gym to uh, having all this nutrition and fitness training and just a full on understanding of how the body works to um, understanding how the mind works to understanding how the emotions work to now being in this space of spiritual clarity that takes in all of that, that takes in the body, the thoughts, the emotions. It's, it's an all encompassing process. And so I've come to understand really how we can kill ourselves and drive the energy of, out of our cells, causing our cells to, to entropy and uh, actually age ourselves and kill ourselves and cause disease in our bodies. I'm going to do a whole show on that. So let me just pause for a second. Hey, Marco from Portugal. Um, you know, you and I should talk because I actually have a client right now in Portugal that is um, building out a, a marina. And um, I'd love to have a conversation with you. So PM me, would you? And I'm going to be across the pond um, in London. I'll be meeting with him in London, and then I'll be in Amsterdam. So perhaps there's some way for us to all collaborate on something. At the very least, I'd love to connect the dots. Um, so Marco, he's also a founder of ONG for Children. You're going to have to tell us what ONG is. That's really cool. Um, all right, so let's see. I've been wanting to keep these shows to about a 30 minute timeline. So I've got about eight minutes left. I think we might go a little bit over today. I hope you don't mind. But what I want to do now is I want to actually teach you a tool. Now, here's the deal. Um, even though time really doesn't exist, it's, it's, it's just a measuring tool that um, we as human beings have invented to make sense of um, how we relate to the experience of life, essentially. So, because the thing is, is that everything happens simultaneously. Like we experience everything simultaneously. Um, our ego has a hard time with that. Our ego has a hard time relating to this concept that everything is now, that there is no past and there is no future, there's just now. Um, so as human beings, we have this wonderful construct and, um, okay, you gotta go, to, oh, Dr. Serrano has to go do some surgery. So, okay, go take care of your patients. Thanks for joining us, good to see you. Um, so, uh, this, this idea of time being a limitation is really the point that I want to make here. I just want to, I want to make the point that um, time, if you buy into this idea that time is limited, it's a, it's a limited supply, and that you have to, you only have so much time to get things done or accomplished, then you're actually creating this massive hurdle and this huge block for yourself. Now, um, so uh, as that relates to achieving goals, you know, I used to do this old school goal setting process. Uh, I don't do it anymore because it was very much in relationship to time. Now, sometimes the ego needs to attach itself to time and, and it can work in your favor, but where it works against you is if you feel like, time is this limited commodity and you're racing against the clock and you've, you know, you can never win at that. You know, even if you beat the clock, you stressed yourself out and the stress is just a whole bunch of um, resistance energy. So getting into a space where you really understand how to manage your relationship to time 
then you can actually elongate time if you need more time to get things done. And you can actually shorten time if you want it to go by um, quicker. So the way to do that is through understanding that we have a timeline. And the timeline is actually how we store time in our mind. It's like how we relate to time. So there's um, two different basic relationships to time. There's in time and there's through time. So in time people are different in terms of how they relate to time than through time people are. So basically, just to kind of break it down, the you know one way of looking at it is if I get there at say, if my appointment's at eight and I get there at eight or within a few minutes after eight, then I'm, I'm basically, I'm, I'm on time. Um, and then the other way of looking at it is if I get there at quarter two, then I'm already late because I should arrive early. So it's just our perceptions of how time works. So first of all, you want to identify, are you an in-time person? Or are you a through-time person? Then the second thing is you want to get into a visual exercise of how you actually store time. And we call it um, the timeline. So typically, people will store experiences that they've had in a linear fashion, and they'll store experiences that they want to have in a linear fashion. Now, I'm not going to talk about the stuff that you have had happen like the past and how that can be stored multidimensionally. I'll talk about that later because that really is about uh, significant emotional events that you've had will determine the hierarchy of how you store a past event in your timeline. So let's just set that aside for a second. What I really would like to introduce to you is the concept of your timeline as it relates to creating your future, right? Hi, Janine Vaughn and Luis Carella, Korea, Korea, I think that's Korea. Tell me if I've pronounced it wrong. Um, so the thing of it is this. When we place things in our timeline, like let's say we want to achieve a goal uh, six, six months from now, we set something for ourselves it's six months down the road. Then what ends up happening is the unconscious mind goes to work and it connects to the superconscious, which, you know, draws in from the quantum field or from the universe or God or whatever you want to call it. It draws into you the resources, the people, the events, the places, the things, the ideas, the phone calls, the emails, the chance meetings, it just pulls all of that in. It just draws all of that in. And that contributes to the actualization of that goal six months out. Now, where this becomes an issue is if you, one of two things, you actually keep extending that six month goal out, 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 out to where you never actually receive it. And I have worked with thousands of clients that do that, where they'll put a goal in their timeline and then they'll keep pushing that goal out into the future and filling the space in their timeline between now and then with more to do stuff, which means that they never actually allow themselves to receive the goal. So that's an issue. Right. And if you can relate to this, I'm sure you could probably look at your life and go, oh, my gosh, like I've had the same goal. I've written down the same goal year after year after year after year. And I still don't have that thing. And I would bet money that that goal is probably something big. So it's like probably a sexy car or the perfect relationship or a weight loss or big money because you equate this in your mind that the bigger the goal, the longer it takes. So I'm curious, just put in the comment section, how many of you believe that the bigger the goal, the longer it takes? Because I, that is going to be your number one hurdle is this relationship to time. It's messing with you. 
it's got you hijacked okay so the other block around the timeline using this as the theory right which I've had a lot of experience with and it gets amazing results um, the other issue is like we have these uh, things that we place on our timeline but we don't actually connect to the outcome we're too busy trying to figure out the how like how am I going to get to here and how am I going to get to here and we've got all these milestones and these benchmarks stop it Stop doing that. You'll make yourself crazy. All I want you to do is focus on the end result. And I want you to get into a space of seeing it, hearing it, smelling it, tasting it, touching it, feeling it. Get into all of your sensory acuity of the end goal. And don't even look at or consider or think about how. Because the minute you go to a how, what ends up happening is you come to a conclusion and that conclusion becomes the energy block. It becomes the block that keeps you, hi Roberto, it keeps you from receiving the answer. All right, so you just wanna to connect to the end goal and just roll into the sensory acuity on the end goal. And then you want to actually place yourself in the end goal as if it's already happened. And in your mind, turn yourself around and face back toward now. And then you'll just see your entire timeline fill in with all of the answers. And I'm serious. It just becomes super easy. Now, I want to say the kind of success that I have had using this tool and teaching this tool to my clients. And before I say that, I want to say this. I want to just tell you, you know, I've got two programs coming up. The Business Accelerator Bootcamp is coming up uh, late February, the 22nd, 23rd. And in March, I have the Shift, Change, and Heal Your Money Story online course. You guys, if you live away from LA, just take my course, just take my online course. If you are anywhere within you know, a two or three hour drive or a quick plane ride, just jet in, spend a couple days with me. It's really easy. So um, I'll, I'll send you guys the links for those as soon as the website gets up and it should be tomorrow. So, um, most important thing is that you turn around and you face toward now and you see that timeline fill in and all of the answers, all of the people, all of, all of the events, it just comes, it just rushes toward you. Now, here's the kind of results that I've gotten with this tool. Let me tell you, because I just got off the phone this morning with a client that I worked with like 10 years ago, like before the financial meltdown, right? And I worked with this client off and on for a few years. When I started out working with this client, she was in the mortgage industry and uh, she was doing probably about $15 million in volume a month, which is not bad, right? That's pretty decent volume for an account executive um, on the wholesale side. And um, within a very short period of time, we doubled that. So we, were, we had her up to doing $30 million in deals a month and so we were talking this morning and we were reminiscing about how astronomical the numbers were that we were doing together and um, you know when we hit 90 million a month it was like a freaking mind-blowing like off the chain 90 million dollars in volume a month then we actually doubled that and, you know, she was saying to me today, it was like, she said, she goes, you know, it was that timeline exercise that you taught me that really did it for me. She goes, I even saw what, what outfit I was wearing. I just ran the timeline exercise and then boom, it just kept blowing up and blowing up and blowing up and blowing up. And it's like, yeah, hello, we're infinite. Anything is possible. You can take it as far as you want to take it. How far do you want to go? You know, what do you want? It's not, it's not how bad do you want it? That's bullshit. 
Whoever's saying that to you is buying into the whole grind, grunt, struggle, strive paradigm. And honey, I don't teach that. I do not teach that. If that's the kind of program you want, there's lots of other crazy kind of coaching programs out there that will drag you down that rabbit hole and I'm not going there with you. For me, it's like we tweak the smallest tweak for the biggest result and we just allow the flow. So getting into flow, it just comes. It just comes. I mean, I took that that professional, that account executive in the mortgage industry from 15 million a month to 180 million a month, like so enormous. You can't even run those numbers. I'm not even, I mean, we're talking income of millions of dollars a year, personal income, not to mention all the perks, you know, like the TVs and the, and the luxury car leases and the vacations and, you know, I just like, it was, it's so enormous. And so I said to her today, look, you know, we did it once. It can't be, it's just like so easy to do that again. We already have the pattern. This is just, you know, it's just about repatterning yourself, you guys. And anyone can repattern themselves. So I really just want to thank you for jumping on here today. I, I know I'm over time by almost seven minutes, but um, look, I, I really enjoy doing this. This is what I live for. It's what I get out of bed for. It's it's the joy of my life. And um, I'm really super happy to connect with you. Thank you for sharing my show and inviting your tribe and taking the time to be on here. You know, it truly does mean a lot to me. I really am blessed. I just... Um, I just feel like my whole life is just one big blessing after another and having you be a part of it is a lot of that blessing because without you watching this wouldn't even be remotely as fun so thank you I appreciate you and um, so now we're this this was gonna be my last my last show kind of on you know the whole personal growth side of things and so on Friday, we're going to roll into actually the business scale process. Um, but do keep in mind that in my business accelerator system, I layer in neuroscience tools, mindset repatterning every single step of the way, because that's really the key. Like scaling a business is scaling your mindset. Scaling your life is scaling your belief system. It's about expanding beyond your current realm and allowing yourself to receive more. And that's just a repatterning process. It's just, a, it's just very, very simple. And I love it. So thank you for joining me today. I will see you on Friday at 1230. This show airs twice a week. This is your lunchtime mind hack. And I am Deborah Peters. This is the Deborah Peters Show. And I am so appreciative of you being here. And I will see you on Friday at 12.30 p.m. PST. Take care.